podcast is called Stick It Out. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, episode one that comes after the prelude of Stick It Out season three. Uh, if you missed the prelude, go ahead and check that out first. But a quick overview of what Stick It Out is. Uh, we are all Rush fans as Paul disappears and he comes back. Welcome back, Paul. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are all Rush fans. And uh, there are certain Rush songs that perhaps we haven't given a fair shake. Uh, we don't listen to very often or maybe we just flat out don't like. Uh, and the purpose of this show is we're going to take five of those. And for two weeks at a time, we're going to sit with one of them and listen to it basically as much as we can to see if our opinion changes on it at all. Uh, so we have chosen our five songs that was in the prelude, and we had our first song for the first two weeks chosen for us. We have all sat with that song for two weeks and listened to it over and over and over again. And well, without further ado, we're going to let you know what we feel. So Rob, tell us about your song, how you were thinking going into it, and what you think now. Hi, everybody. Yes, Dog Years was my choice, and uh, last time I felt the lyrics were cheesy. Um, I did enjoy the music, so that hasn't changed. Um, but yes, Neil has done it again. He's a crafty bastard, man. Um, I did a little more in-depth listening with the lyrics this time, and also keeping in mind the theme of the album, uh, You know what the album is about. And I didn't realize that... Um, in the lyric part where people in the dog days, people look to serious. I thought it was like an emotional thing. Like, you know, people are, you know, they're looking serious, you know, I didn't realize it was a astrological reference. So having discovered that I'm like, okay, I probably should delve more into the lyrical bit. And, um, and I made all these connections, like, you know, with Sirius XM, you have the little dog for the icon, the dog star, uh, you know, the dog of Orion, you know, so in the, Greek mythology. So all these things, even the uh, part of the lyric where every day, um, uh, trying to think of the part, uh, every dog will have its day is a novel reference, which is um, Water Babies by Walter, no, sorry, by Charles Kingsley. Um, so I discovered that bit of it too. I'm like, okay, well, there's definitely something more to these lyrics than I initially thought. So, so that was kind of the thing that really changed my whole thing long story long i definitely appreciate the song a lot more and uh, i will no longer skip past it when i listen to tesseraco so i give it a two enthusiastic thumbs up so neil converted I, me i dig the tune so i, I hate to say it show. but i'm disappointed <laughs> i'm really disappointed i i huh. that just means there's one more Tess for Echo convert in this lovely group we have here and my job's getting harder and harder, but so be it. Also, you and Paul look really cute today. <laughs> Winsies. Shucks. I'm blushing. Stop, stop. Oh, okay. Now tell. Looking rather Ooh. dapper yourself, Eric. What'd you say? I missed it. You're looking rather dapper yourself. Oh, I always look dapper. <laughs> it's was it's nothing. It's nothing. Oh, Eric. <laughs> Now, Tal, you had a vapor trail, correct? Tell us about That's it. That's right. All right. So as I said in the last episode, Vapor Trail was a song that I never disliked, never liked. It's just a song I barely knew. It fell through the cracks. I listened to it before, like a couple times, like a few years ago or so, but never gave it a fair shot. Completely forgot how it went until I played it for the first time. So it wasn't much of a difficult job for me. And pretty much right away, I thought it was pretty good, but uh, I definitely gained even more of an appreciation for it after I got past like the 10th listen. Um, so I actually kept a tally of how many times I listened to it. And once I got to 20, I just stopped counting just to make sure I did my homework right. And then after I did my 20, I also learned it on drums and filmed the cover over on my YouTube channel, Meet Mac 2112. This is not an advertisement. Sorry. Yeah, I'm shut up. up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep talking about the song. Um, I think it's wonderful. I'm a convert to, I, I never, I always had Vapor Trail near the, like as an album uh, as a whole near the bottom of my, uh, of, of my list for, for Rush albums. But this one brings it farther up. Do I prefer the stuff with synths? Sure. But it's really, really good. It's so powerful. It's so emotional. I feel like all three of them really put their heart and soul into this song. I love, love, love the lyrics. Like you could 
you could feel what Neil was going through at the time. I still have yet to read Ghost Rider, but this song, I feel like almost gives me a little bit of a taste of it. Um, I love the similes he uses. It's really, great, really, really great in, uh, imagery. Fading away like an hourglass, grain by grain. He had no idea what he was about to go through and what he was about to lose in such a short amount of time. Um, but it's really like, he almost makes it sound beautiful in a way too. Like silence all the songbirds stilled by the killing frost. He had a way with words and this is no exception. And the music as well. I, it doesn't really have a real like guitar solo. Like, like Alex doesn't really have his own like solo break, but in the bridge of the song, he does kind of get a little bit higher on the neck and hold some notes up to the high F sharp there. And then a little drum break there as well that I now have memorized because I learned the song. And whenever that part comes, I'm just always rocking out to it. It's just, it, it's awesome. I really love it. Uh, I also love Getty's vocals. You can kind of hear the emotion there, almost as if he was going through this, even though it, it's not his story, it's Neil's. And then there's some amazing symbol work by Neil in the end that was hard for me to memorize when I was learning the song, but I'm a perfectionist. And then some sweet fills to end it. So yes, I love it. I love the song. I'm definitely going to be playing it uh, for leisure, for fun, and not because I have to anymore. Um, <laughs> and it might even be in my top 10, maybe even top five synth free rush songs. It doesn't quite make my top 10 of all time, but top synth free rush songs because vape all of vapor trails has no synths in it, which is kind of crazy. Um, but they really, uh, they use guitar and they use vocal effects, I think, to their advantage to still make the song sound full, even though there are no keyboards in it. So I really respect that. Totally different kind of simple compared to like the first three albums, which also have no synth, but that's just a pure power trio sound. This is mature rush, but more stripped down and I'm all for it. So yes, I love this song now. Did you go with the album or the first release or the remix? Oh yeah, we forgot to talk about that. So most of my listens were for the original uh, mix which I thought was fine. I don't really mind the loudest war in this case. Uh, but then when I was learning it for drums, I, 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 some things were so muddy and he never played this live. So I, I couldn't really judge it off of anything visual. So I had to learn it entirely by ear. Uh, and the remix did clear some things up. So I, I do like both. I don't really have a favorite. I'll just pick one based on my mood. If I'm a little bit angrier, maybe I'll go for the uh, original mix because <laughs> it's just a little bit more in your face. But yeah, cool. both are great. Absolutely wonderfully said, Tal. And I can't help but notice you were much, much more enthusiastic about your song than Rob was about his song. And I just have to wonder if that might have anything to do with the album that it's on, maybe, you think? Maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe? You're going to love what I got to say, then. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear. <laughs> Paul, let's hear it. Uh, as a side note, though, a little bit of side chat. Vapor Trail is my favorite song off of Vapor Trails, so I'm ecstatic to hear that. Excellent. Very cool. And that cover absolutely nailed it, man. Thank you. <laughs> so I also had dog ears as the attire, you know, would show, hopefully. Otherwise, there's other reasons. But uh, I went into it uh, liking Alex's guitar work, not really noticing Getty's bass work. Uh, Neil's drums, there, present, whatever. It felt like a B-side, and lyrics I also thought were cheesy. So I did a bit of a dig as well. I uh, I ended up watching our I, – when I listened to it out of context, I did my first maybe five, six, seven listens, just the song, and I'm like, I am not getting into this at all. I read the lyrics, and I'm like, okay, clever pun there, caught the signals line with the hydrant and all the other winks that Rob mentioned – and I'm like, okay, it's clever, but it's not grabbing me. So what I did was I listened to all of Tess for Echo all the way through repeatedly instead of just dog years. And I ended up gaining a new love for time and motion. Uh, I think virtuality wow. is actually a, a much more, uh, it, it didn't lose anything over time. I watched Rush Van's deep dive of Tess for Echo, the album with Donna, Tim, Ryan, and Ryder. And it actually rejuvenated my love for the album. But not the so I, I'm more of a Test for Echo fan than I even was when the album came out because I appreciate more about the writing, the musicianship. When you think about it, they all came off their longest hiatus yet. 
And Getty had just had a baby, so he took that year off. Neil had the, you know, burning for a buddy and training with Freddy Krueger. And Alex had Victor. And so they all came with these new influences and then came together. And it was like they were rejuvenated. And it brought, it was different, definitely. I, I going from Counterparts with Test for Echo was it's it was a little jarring back then now i actually it seems more crisp and it makes more sense to me like i have a new appreciation i think if you did this eric and you actually survived to tell the tale and didn't lose your mind you might actually appreciate a little more you know if you know dozens you know weren't lost in the in the melee but no i so i don't that being said i don't love dog years but i definitely have a newfound Respect for it. Neil being silly. It was written about his set. He wrote it hungover mm -hmm. after the first night that they came back together for the Test for Echo sessions about like looking at his seven year old husky Nick. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, funny and clever and wistful, even and still managed to not, yeah, it's cheesy, but it was meant to be. So, uh, kind of the whole light, lighten up Francis idea. I don't mind it. I don't hate it anymore. I don't know that I'd seek it out actively, but if it was, it was definitely my least favorite, like looking forward to on my list. And now it it's nowhere near my bottom. Done. There you go. Dog years. Test record. Derek. Arf. <laughs> you look like, you know, Fred and the Scooby gang just unmasked you. <laughs> I, you far cry. <laughs> I, I I hope you're getting a decent sized tax break for that charity work, Paul, because that was <laughs> that was well done. Good job. Um, for the record, I have done that for Test for Echo or with Test for Echo about a year and a half ago, and here we are today. So, I am stubbornly not going to defend Test for Echo ever. Now, the song that I had was Far Cry. Uh, this was a song that uh, mainly I just didn't get because I knew that so many people loved it and I just didn't get it. And more often than not, I skipped it. Uh, I listened to it a lot. I A lot of it was sort of actively listening. A lot of it was listening while at work and it was tuned down and I was doing other things, but it was playing. I listened to all four live versions, which I guess I kind of had forgotten in the back of my mind that they played it on R40 and Clockwork Angels, not just Snakes and Time Machine. Um, I got to say, I get it more. I don't love it. It's not in my top three or four on the album even, but I'm not going to skip it. I I love the verse. I love the chorus. The, the instrumental at the beginning and the end and in between is eh to me. <laughs> Like that, the punches, you know, I get it. It's it's fun. It's active. It's just not for me. The solo, not for me. And then the outro is the same as the intro. But I love the verse. I love the guitar, the the quick pace of the guitar. I love the lyrics, especially the chorus, the lyrics and the chorus. You know, one day I feel I'm on top of the world. The next it's falling in on me. I can get back on. That's like, that's just, you know, so well put and so encouraging uh, for really any kind of situation. So uh, and I found myself enjoying the live version a lot more than the studio, which surprised me because this is one that I've always said I'm not a big fan of either, but especially not the live version. And listening to it a bunch of times over and over again, that kind of flipped. I really liked the live version, especially even more surprisingly, the R40 version, which I've always been really critical of the mix on R40. I just don't care for the mix, but I really liked Far Cry on R40, so... Uh, this is definitely one that I changed my opinion on a lot more than I thought I was going to. I thought I was pretty set in not really giving this a shot, but uh, here we are. It's a it's a solid solid song. So, what is it about the R forty version you like the most? Because I always thought they kind of turned the heaviness down and, and, and the fullness down on that one. It kind of sounds a little more dull to me than the. It's, I feel like on snakes and I think the snakes and time machine ones have the most body, the most force. I I, I don't really think it's dirty guitar tone. Really, it's not my. Bass. Not my favorite live version, but I liked it a lot. And that surprised me because I don't listen to much of R40 anymore. So I don't know what it was about it. Just maybe it was more accessible. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> cool. Excellent. 
as long as it's not test for echo, I have a decent shot at liking it. Now, uh, we have to do the fun job of spinning the big wheel. I remember to say it this time. It's called the big wheel because the big wheel is a Rush song, and we do Rush puns on the Rush show because we are Rush fans. No so way. we're going to spin the big wheel. I believe it is Paul's turn to go first. Paul, Thanks. Rob, you're wearing the same shirt. It's really confusing. <laughs> um, I'll cover it up. Let's see. There's the right screen, and this is Rob's wheel, I believe. Oh, Paul disappeared, and he's back. Okay. This is your wheel, right, Rob? And you can see it? Yeah. Yeah. How wonderful. Let's I need to chew the song today. <laughs> <laughs> How about you sing it for us, Tal? Never lands on me. Okay. Um, Playing for time. Don't want to wait forever. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Lucky me. Uh, um, you, man. What do we have? Don't you have enough power? I never have enough power. Much we have power. Superconductor, Nobody's Hero, Spindrift, and Bravest Face. I really like Nobody's Hero. So I'm going to give you Nobody's Hero because I think it is a fantastic song. And uh, what are your thoughts going in? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I like the guitar work on there. Music always is the thing that, you know, if, if I don't care for the lyric too much, the music always kind of hangs with me. Um, lyrically, I'm not very enthused. Um, it's like one of the things with Neil, like sometimes I get a, a lyric of his that just, I just like, you know what? Ah. So I have a very strong, um, I don't I wouldn't say very strong. That's probably too harsh, but uh, there's certain things that he writes about in the song that kind of rub me the wrong way. Um, just in terms of, uh message um so yeah i i, I had when i when i first heard the song i listened to the whole thing and then when it would come on the, the album i would tend to skip it so it'd be one of those moments again where i wouldn't sit there with the lyrics and like read through the lyrics it would just be like i hear a, a bit of it I'm like nah you know, i just pass through it go to the next song so i don't know if i'll be too keen on this one even after 20 listens i'm not sure i mean i i love the music I always love the music love alex's guitar solo all that stuff. Um, the acoustic guitar is great. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to see, you know. I really have to see on this one what's going to happen. I don't know. I'll give him my best. Interesting. I really like the music video for this one. Mm -hmm. It's like really stripped down and and a bare bones music video sort of. I like it. I like the song, but I think the different stages live version takes it to a whole new level. But ever so slightly slower tempo. I actually think... Uh, more. It makes it more meaningful a little bit. Just, just like it makes it even more like a ballad. And it just sounds so, so good in that amphitheater. They should have done more uh, recordings, I think, in uh, live albums and outdoor shows because they just sound so much clearer. But anyway, that's off topic. <laughs> you should write them a letter. Let them know. I would love to. <laughs> okay. Tal's turn. All right. Well, I was only a kid. Didn't know oh. not to be afraid. Play the game. Not the way the big boy. Wait, what is it? Wait, what are the? Thank you, Tal. Very nice. It's red and white for Canada. Yeah, because you're Canadian. I really want to get like one of those little mini Canadian flags, and I want to say because you're Canadian, and then wave it and then set it down. Okay. <laughs> That's All right. Here we go. Oh god. <laughs> oh, very nice. You're going to be oh. very busy. These next two weeks, what are you thinking? Do I have to? <laughs> I'm in. That's the game. Do I have to do twenty lessons? Though? You do. Make it forty for asking. That. Oh no, no. Um, no. Okay. Jokes aside. Um, it, like I don't. I genuinely don't really hate any of my choices. Like it just oh, another kind of another one that I never bothered to listen to that much. Although I do going in, I know a little bit more than Vapor Trail. Uh, we'll just have to see. It's 12 minutes of spoken words and no keyboards. My favorite. And and, and fantasy stories. I think apparently it connects with Bytor and the Snow Dog. I don't follow these the, these uh, sci-fi sweet stories. I really don't. <laughs> but uh, it should be interesting. <laughs> Needless to say. So this was one of probably the last two or three Rush songs that I listened to. Like, because I, mm. you know, didn't become a fan till 2009 or whatever. So it's like, I kind of got to pick and choose which songs I listened to first. This was the last two or three. 
it's outstanding. It is phenomenal. I would argue that sometimes it's better than 2112. I think it is absolutely amazing. You're going to love it. Do you like Lord of the Rings at all? Never seen it. What? <laughs> seen it? <laughs> seen it Oops. have you uh, read it oh well you knew there was a book first right <laughs> yeah there's a book first no, no i've read it nor have i seen it well okay so you have a lot of I just aged 10 weeks. years <laughs> you have to read all three books and the hobbit and you have to listen to this song 20 times so yes great black candle he was doing a drum cover before you know it you'll, you'll be on there right. playing it no problem see you when you're 30 <laughs> so so excited see there you go no I, I think if you give it a shot it, it's a great song now we have we have paul and his my wi-fi holds up is popping up right you can see the wheel yes oh all right we're gonna stop you go <laughs> click 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 <laughs> no, oh, wow. i'm, I'm wow. so good. And I gave him my choice last week. I am just so good at this. <laughs> this I'm like, great. I should be like a professional wheel of names.com spinner. I'm so good. Okay, let's see. Here's a necromancer. We have 21 that I pick. Natural Science, Cygnus, Xandu. We're going to give you Cygnus X1, book one. Mm. Oh. Okay. Congratulations. I'm hoping that we can save the best for last. So we're doing Cygnus this week. What do you think? I wondered. Uh, no, I'm, I, I I said it last episode. I don't have anything against any of these with the possible exception of a little bit of prejudice against uh, one of the other ones. Won't get into that conversation with you right now again, but mm -hmm. out of fear of redundancy. No, I'm, I'm excited because if I could take... This should be common sense. You want to light the comment section up really quick. If I could become this much of a fan of Test for Echo, even though I, I didn't hate it before, I liked it a lot, but I if I got a newfound respect for Dog Years and the whole album of Test for Echo based on that, I don't want to set myself up for failure, but I think I'll, I'll end up liking this. It was a case, these other four are, I never gave them chances. I was very happy with the eras I like. And love so this is i one of the reasons i wanted to be on this season was i want to force myself to get into the material that i never gave a chance so you know i, I will take recommendations you guys have mentioned live versions or certain ways to to listen to this should i listen to something else with it yes i'm gonna dive into the history so yeah you should definitely listen to it all 20 times this and then book two okay well um, does he have to listen to the book to 20 times as well? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whole experience. That's okay. I don't that's 28, fast, minutes, so. 28 minutes, 20 times. So, uh, have fun. You have, I have a long time minutes, to work. I believe. My math is right 520 minutes of total. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, no, not 520, 560, 560 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, the different stages live version of Cygnus book one is pretty sick. Which I was there for, so apparently I didn't appreciate it when I was there in the moment because I was there for the recording at World Wait. Music Theater in Tinley Park, Illinois. For Wait, no, 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 you got it wrong. You got it wrong. It's disc three, so it's oh. actually a show in England. Gotcha, from way back in the day. Gotcha, the yeah. Hammersmith Odeon show. Okay. Yes, Hammersmith Odeon shows so how much I cared. Up. If you look up, <laughs> I, actually, there's, there's an even better live version. If you look on YouTube, Rush Black Forest 1979. It's a recording from. On the Hemispheres tour in Offenbach, if I'm pronouncing that right, Germany. It doesn't sound quite as good, but I thought Getty was straining a little bit in the different stages live version, but his voice is spot fucking on in Black Force 1979. He hits all of those high notes, even a down up all the way to the A5. It's insane. Remember how I feel about early Getty vocals. That might be a hard sell, but okay. Well, would you rather hear him nail the vocals or hear him kind of struggle a little bit? <laughs> if it's a newer version, maybe kind of struggle, but we'll see. Well, it's only a year later, but yeah, that's what I recommend for you. Great, great song. It's a great, very jam. interesting. I have a buddy great of mine. Voyage. Yeah, I have a buddy of mine that's very into like all the modern indie stuff and a little bit of rap, but a lot of the modern indie stuff. And one day, I think it was four years ago now, he goes, Hey, Eric, he goes, you ever listen to Cygnus X1 
book one. I'm like, of course I've listened to it. He goes, I really like it. I'm like, you? <laughs> so <laughs> if you're really into modern indie, try out saying this X1 book one. Apparently they mesh somehow. <laughs> No, I'm anxious to see how that turns out. Okay. And at last, we have My Wheel, which is showing up right now, right? Showing yes. Up. Wonderful. Looking it's for love. Thank you, Tal. And it's green and yellow. <laughs> it's, gr- <laughs> it's green and yellow for the, the Green Bay Packers. Go Pack Go. Who wow. needs Aaron Rodgers? All right. Oh, oh my God. No, no. Ah. Almost talent. Take the time. power. Wow. All right, Rob. Rob. You need a chance to choose wow, one. Right? Like a, wow. I don't know what to do. Um, this has never happened to me before. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> right. Let's see. I shall choose Seven Cities of Gold. Okay. Um, I'm interested because. When Clockwork Angels first came out, that's like all I played. I played Clockwork Angels front to back over and over and over again. And if it didn't get to me that time, I don't know if it'll get to me this time. But we'll see. We'll see. And then, you know, they played it live on Clockwork Angels. So we'll we'll see if the live version has any effect, but I don't know. I'm not don't hold your breath on this one. So maybe read the book. I've read the book. Unlike Tal, who has not read Lord of the Rings or <laughs> seen it. Who cares about seeing it. Yeah. not my kind of movie or book sorry i mean well i mean i guess i didn't give it a chance but i mean just that genre oh, oh sort of like me and signature sex one book one okay but well, that's the point you're gonna stick it out right i will stick it out all right well there you have it uh i have seven cities of gold rob has nobody's hero tal has a song that i can't remember and paul has signus x1 book one hold on i'm gonna remember don't say it <laughs> tal has the necromancer because we were just talking about lord of the rings so uh there you go how hey paul how about you take us out all right well thanks for watching make sure you uh check out our other great shows and don't forget to like comment if you're playing along with us let us know what you had to stick it out for for the last two weeks what song did you give another chance and how do you feel about it now and that's all we got aloha that was way better than i've ever done it thank you paul i can do it next time if you insist all right see you folks (laughs) 